Greetings, friends. Welcome to CTUCC Conference Cast for March 27th, 2014, the regular podcast of the Connecticut Conference of the United Church of Christ. Whoever you are and wherever you may be on life's journey at this very moment, you are welcome here. We begin this week's conference cast with this meditation from the Reverend Dr. Michael Seba, Southwest Regional Minister, read this week by your podcast host. In the fourth chapter of Genesis, God finds Cain, one of the two sons of Adam and Eve, and asks where his brother Abel is. Cain has in fact murdered his brother, and so he answers, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? In Genesis, the first question a human being asks God is, Am I my brother's keeper? For all his faults, Cain asks the right question. While God doesn't answer Cain's question directly, God rarely does, Scripture's answer is a resounding yes. We are the keepers of our sisters and brothers, just as we are the caretakers of all creation. We cannot love God without loving our neighbor. The ministry of the church has always included caring for those in need. The Acts of the Apostles and Paul's letters to the Corinthians and Romans mention an offering for believers in Jerusalem who are suffering from famine. The Apostles encouraged believers in distant lands to give of their resources to help people they had never met. Why? Because we are all connected to one another as the body of Christ, and we are all called to offer God's extravagant, loving hospitality to everyone. For nearly 60 years, churches in the United States have responded to an appeal during Lent to meet the needs of the world. We know this appeal as one great hour of sharing. You can learn more about the good things made possible by your gifts and how you can promote this offering in your church by visiting ucc.org slash O-G-H-S. And as you think about your gift to one great hour of sharing and how you will invite others in your church to give. Ask yourself the question Cain asked God. Am I my sister's and my brother's keeper? And let your gift be your answer. Here is a prayer for this week. Giving God for you every hour is an hour of sharing. May it also be so for us. Amen. Please remember the loved ones of the Reverend Dr. Frank Andrew Stone in your prayers this week. Ordained in 1952, he gave his career to a teaching ministry, including missionary service in Turkey and a distinguished career as professor of educational studies at the University of Connecticut. He died on March 6th at the age of 85. And please remember the friends and family of the Reverend Alvard Beardsley in your prayers. Ordained in Salisbury, Connecticut in 1953, he spent the majority of his career as chaplain and professor of religion at Hollins College in Virginia. Retiring back to Northwestern Connecticut, he served as a part-time interim pastor in several churches. He died on March 21st at the age of of 87. In the news this week, the Connecticut Conference's new legislative advocate, Michelle Mudrick, had to hit the ground running as the General Assembly began this year's session just two days after she took up her duties of bearing the concerns of the Connecticut Conference to the state's lawmakers. She has worked diligently to introduce herself to legislative leaders, often in company with their constituents, and to follow the progress of four bills upon which conference delegates have registered interest through the resolutions process. Mudrick submitted written testimony in favor of a bill that would withdraw authorization for keno gambling in the state. 
and in favor of a bill that would continue support for legal aid to the poor. She is also working to prevent interrupted coverage of children who are in Connecticut's Husky health care plan. One final measure has just been lifted from her plate, as yesterday both chambers of the General Assembly voted to raise the state's minimum wage to $10.10 an hour. And Governor Daniel P. Malloy has pledged to sign the bill into law today. One of the lesser-known treasures of the United Church of Christ is the Our Whole Lives program, a set of age-appropriate curricula for teaching children, teens, and adults about the complex world of relationships, sexuality, and identity. The UCC developed it along with the Unitarian Universalist Association over 10 years ago. For the second year, a conference at Silver Lake will use Our Whole Lives tools to help a group of young people better understand themselves and the choices they will make in the months and years ahead. Co-deans Missy Sturdivan and Gabrielle Joffe took some time with me during the Dean's Retreat to tell me more about it. Ms. Sturdivan answered my question about why camp. Have you done this in a local church setting? No. Okay. So why do it at camp? So we really wanted to do this at camp because I know not every church is doing this curriculum and um, the churches that are uh, just are really finding that it's really helpful for people to have a safe place to get this information um, and have that spiritual background be a part of it as well and the spiritual integration. So for all the folks who do not have this uh, program happening in your churches, this is a really great opportunity to get some of this information for um, youth. And the we also really specifically wanted to look at this age group of seven to nine um, grade because that is the like beefiest of all of the curricula. I think it says a lot for that being the prime time for people to get this information and really soak it in. Many schools teach health and sexual education. But the camp setting offers an opportunity to cover things schools rarely can, including relationships, emotions, and ethics. As Ms. Joffe told me... And I think it's cool because it's also outside of that school, home, church community where you can have that space to kind of um, say, you know, think things out loud that you might not feel like, you know, at your school, everyone has their friends and gossip and stuff. So it's, it's just kind of a place that... You know, for those for that whole week, you can kind of step outside your usual um, routine and have these conversations. And also, you know, we do all the other camp stuff, the swimming, the crafts. So it's all built into that really fun camp environment. So you kind of build a community out of our little crew that yeah. is there. This is a place where they can take a risk. Yeah. And where, and you're not going to get that spiritual integration at. Mm-hmm. school either. You're not going to talk about how God loves you and God made you to be who you are and um, what that really looks like. And they're not going to be talking about scriptures or singing songs mm-hmm. about Jesus and how that has to do with this. So, yeah. yeah. Last year, both conferees and parents really appreciated the program. The young people made good use of a safe space where they could talk and not be judged. And the parent gave thanks for the opportunity their children would have that they might wish they'd had when they were young. The opportunity to discuss questions like... Am I normal? Yeah, am I normal? Is this okay? Is, yeah. is it okay to do this? Um, what does this mean about me as a spiritual person? And like, what does God think about these kinds of things? Um, and also... I, this happened to me and where's a safe place I can get more resources on this or um, just more information around like what what kind of support I can get and um, have other people have gone through something yeah. like that before. Sturdivant and Joffe, along with their counselor staff, will be waiting this summer for these questions and plenty more about my so-called life. At Second Congregational Church UCC in Coventry last weekend, Girls got together to play with their dolls and also to raise money for mission programs. They enjoyed an American Girl Garden Party, including characters from the series of books and videos that accompany the well-known set of dolls. The kids thoroughly enjoy this, said Dad Stephen Flickenschild. I know my daughter does. And the church raised over $1,100 for their outreach ministries. 
We've continued to add invitations to summer conferences from Silver Lake's deans to the Silver Lake YouTube channel. And here's two more. Hi, I'm Craig. And I'm Allison. And we're the co-deans for God's Imaginarium, which is a conference for fifth and sixth graders this summer at Silver Lake Conference Center. We're excited to have you join us this summer because we're going to swim and do arts and crafts and climb trees and... Go play in the garden. And go play in the garden, which are all things that you'll do no matter what conference you attend at Silver Lake Conference Center. But at God's Imaginarium, you'll all, also... All kinds of amazing things are going to happen, and we don't actually even know what all of them are going to be, because some of it is going to be because of you. Things that we create together, that we build together, we'll use our bodies, we'll use our imagination. So come join us and play. Because God is a creator. God used God's imagination to create this world, and we're going to imagine right along with God at Silver Lake Conference Center this summer. We hope you'll come with us. Hi, my name is Missy Sturdivant. I'm Gabrielle Jaffe. And we are the co-deans of My So-Called Life. One really cool thing we want to let you know about this conference is that we get to have really awesome and honest conversations about things like dating and relationships and friendships and um, we get to have conversations where the youth really find out questions uh, that they have and answer them. And we're also basing the week loosely off the, the Our Whole Lives curriculum that some congregations use for sex ed um, and we're also leaving some time for you all to decide what we do and what you want to learn about and so we're keeping it open for that. You'll find all those videos at youtube.com slash silverlakect. And of course, you'll find more on these stories, plus all the current headlines on our website at ctucc.org slash news. The 9th UCC New England Women's Celebration will be held this weekend in Portland, Maine. Learn about fossil fuel divestment on Saturday in Hamden. Father Tom Ryan offers a meditation workshop called The Divine Indwelling on Sunday in Southport. The next webinar session on children's ministry in the way of Jesus is March 31st. The Spring Women's Spirit Retreat of Yoga and Sacred Chant will be held at Silver Lake the weekend of April 4th through 6th. The film Gasland Part 2 about the risks of hydraulic fracturing or fracking will have a showing in Southington on April 11th. The 86th Annual Gathering of the Connecticut Women of the UCC will be April 12th in Plainville. The weekend of April 25th is a busy one. That Spring Action Weekend, which prepares Silver Lake Conference Center for the summer program. It's also the weekend of the Awakenings Conference in Holyoke, Massachusetts. On Saturday the 26th, the Historians Workshop will be held in Coventry, and the Connecticut Conference Choir begins rehearsals for next fall in Naugatuck. This year's Journey to the Water's Edge Conference on Trauma Ministries is titled Joy Need Not Wait Till Morning. It will be held April 29th in Madison. The Farmington Valley Association and Simply Smiles are teaming up for a mission trip to the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribal Reservation in South Dakota beginning May 3rd. Silver Lake will host an open house for those interested in learning more about its summer program on May 4th. By all means, come then. But also visit SilverLakeCT.org to find out about summer offerings and to register. Mark your calendars now for May 17th, the fourth annual Youth Revival to be held this year at Dixwell Avenue UCC in New Haven. And golfers, go get your clubs ready for the eighth annual Silver Lake Golf Tournament on June 3rd in Waterbury. You can always learn more about what's coming up in the Connecticut Conference by visiting us at ctucc.org slash events. We conclude today with a Spirited Wednesday thought from the Reverend Allison Buttrick Patton, pastor of the Saugatuck Congregational Church UCC in Westport. She writes, Maybe, just maybe, our own ideas about perfection are completely off base. Maybe God who works through a blind beggar works in all of us, rejoices in each of us, just as we are, whole and precious.
And that brings this conference cast to a close. Thanks to Michael Seba for his reflection and to GarageBand for our music. Primary funding for Conference Cast comes from your congregation's gifts to our church's wider mission, basic support, changing lives through the United Church of Christ. This is Eric Anderson, the Minister of Communications and Technology for the Connecticut Conference of the United Church of Christ, praying that your days this week may be filled with the presence, the guidance, and the grace of God. Thank you.